Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 release and Shudder original, The Cleansing Hour. And this film is hitting Shudder on October 8th. Thursday, October 8th is when it hits Shudder. This is going up ahead of that. And for that reason, this is a no spoiler review. Although there are spoilers to the, the degree that I, I will talk about things that have basically been in the trailer. You know, anything that's out there that's in the the short synopsis that was released by Shudder or anything in the trailer, basically, is kind of fair game. Uh, it doesn't ruin anything about the film because there's a lot of stuff that happens that you'll just have no idea. So you can safely watch this if you've not seen the film. And yeah, let's go. Uh, I do have to have kind of a disclaimer in the beginning of this is that uh, if you're not very familiar with me as a reviewer, um, you need to know that I am not a fan of almost at all of like possession films, ghosts, uh, like ghost films and found footage films. Those are like my three subgenres that I really don't get into. For some reason, it's very, very hard for a film in those subgenres to really grab my attention and make me feel like I'm really enjoying it. So there are exceptions to those rules, but for the most part, they don't. So if, if one catches me in it to any degree, I have to kind of think about it and be like, uh, what would someone who's into this subgenre think about this film? So that said, I do think that people who are into the possession subgenre would probably find this a pretty solid film because it actually interested me a bit. And normally with possession films, I'm just like, boring, 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 don't care, don't care, don't care. So... The fact that they got me to pay attention, pretty good. All right, this was directed by Damien Levesque, who did the films Dark, Deadly, and Dreadful, and is working on a film Asylum, Twisted Horror, and Fantasy Tales, which I believe is an anthology. Um, and I will say up front, the writing is pretty solid. The directing looks really good. The acting, for the most part, is quite good. Uh, technically, like cinematography wise, it looks good. It looks good. A lot of the technical stuff is well done with this. There's a bunch of CGI in the film that is used well. And when it doesn't look all that great, they do the smart thing of not having it on screen for a prolonged amount of time. So you can't really tell that it's really bad or looks a little bit off. I mean, you can start to, but then it cuts away from it and it works for that reason. So they're very smart about how they did the CG. Uh, and there are some practical effects in it as well, uh, in particular one at the very end that is really cool looking, really good, but I'll talk about that a little bit more. Obviously not going to spoil it, but uh, the film was written by Levesque and Aaron Horwitz, um, who doesn't have any other writing credits, Horwitz, so like I said, it's a Shutter original coming Thursday, October 8th, so if this ends up sounding interesting, make sure you check that out. Uh, so kind of a short synopsis on the film, it's basically about some people who are running a online exorcism channel basically it's kind of like a youtube ish type thing where they're doing exorcisms on their whatever their youtube ish type thing is i don't even i don't even think i caught what it was but but yeah so anyway so online doing exorcisms they they're going to do one live and things go wrong i mean that's pretty much all i'm going to say cuz that's really all you need to know about the the base premise and I don't want to spoil anything about it so there you go uh, it jumps into action pretty much immediately which is always good to kind of grab the viewer and get them excited from the get-go so I really did like that um, the only problem is when they start with the action for someone like me there are a lot of kind of typical possession trappings that are involved immediately so I kind of started to roll my eyes immediately and I was just like oh is this going to be like the same old well-trodden ground and nothing new, but it ended up not being like that. So I I was happy about that aspect of it. Um, also going into it, I didn't I hadn't read the uh, synopsis of it, so I didn't know it was like an online ordeal that these people were doing. So when that's kind of uh, revealed, I was like, oh, this is a different take. You know, taking possessions and exorcism and, st and stuff like that and taking it more into the social media age which social media is pointed to a bunch in this film so that might actually be something that takes some of the older horror viewers out of it um me personally you know i'm almost 40 years old so i kind of fall in that area where it's like you know that stuff could bother me but really it doesn't i just realized that you know it's a younger crowd than me making some horror films and 
you know, that's a big part of life is social media. So it's going to be in there. So I'm not surprised when it comes up and I'm open to it. So if you're going to watch it and you're an older viewer, just be open to that. Just know it's going to happen. <laughs> I know people hate social media sometimes, but you know, it's a part of life. So it'll be in film. Excuse me. There's a level of arrogance that gets introduced uh, in, in, in a key character as a, as an attribute of a key character in this film which ends up kind of foreshadowing the issues that end up coming up and kind of plays to, you know, some of the underlying themes in the film, what they're trying to get at. Uh, and that same character is also su supposed to be living a certain lifestyle in a way and doesn't. And this kind of points to one of the underlying theme themes of when you live your life kind of misrepresenting yourself, and especially when you're misrepresenting yourself for bad reasons, uh, so that is an underlying theme, which is a good theme, typically, when it comes up in film. And I think they covered it in a decent way. In some ways, it gets to be a little bit too much during the film, and in other ways, it's fine. So it's kind of a mixed bag on that one. There's a big focus on social media, like I just said. A point is made about entertainment, specific, specific, eh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, specifically online content creators. You know, people who do YouTube videos, stuff like that. And that basically with videos, you just have to keep one upping yourself. And it's kind of that pressure and what it can end up leading people into doing, which is, you know, kind of questioning things and being like, how big do I go? Do I do things that are riskier? Do I do things that aren't ethical? Do I do things that, you know, misrepresent things, including myself as a person? So it, it kind of struggles with that stuff and brings that up. There's a bit of a comedic side to the film from time to time, which uh, keeps it kind of fun. They, you know, when things get super, super serious on the film, they, they kind of abandon that. But leading up to that, they have some comedic aspects to it, which I really do think helps with the pacing in the beginning. It, it helps kind of move it when they need to introduce some characters and some backstory on characters and who they are and, you know, the more boring things, but they inject some comedy into it to kind of get you through. And I like that aspect of the writing. I, I think that really does work. Um, and, and a bunch of the comedy kind of ends up being in the form of kind of going a little bit over the top by like, by making fun of what they're doing in the film. So I do like that. Uh, there's some solid jump scares in this. There's not a ton, a ton of jump scares, but there are a few jump scares in it. And every, every one of them that happened, I was like, yeah, that's a pretty solid jump scare. I, it wasn't one that I was like, oh, I saw that coming, or it wasn't actually good. Pretty solid. So, and that's kind of hard to do nowadays. Um, like I said, CGI looking pretty solid in this. There's a little bit of an Evil Dead feel to it, uh, having to do with a demon that is in this, like a possessed person, basically. It's kind of like a Deadite-esque attitude that this demon has, which is kind of like you know, playful, a little bit funny at times, so I like that. I, I thought that when The Evil Dead came out, that was a very unique, interesting new twist on possession and on demons, uh, so to see that kind of reused works, and I like it. The whole movie is dark, like lighting-wise, it, it's dark. Well, I mean, it, it's a horror movie, so material-wise it is also dark, but lighting-wise it's very dark, but you can still clearly see what's going on. And I always have issues with, with films that do things in the dark and you can't see what's going on. The way that they were able to light it enough but still be in the dark gives it a really good look to the film, but also you don't miss what's happening. So, well executed on that front. Uh, they employ flashbacks for some kind of like gradual reveal of backstory, which... The flashbacks didn't do a whole lot for me, honestly, and I kind of... I don't know, it, it, just what they choose to use, chose to use as the flashbacks just didn't have the impact that I think they were going for, so I would have liked to see them do it a different way, maybe? I don't know, just the flashbacks were a little bit weird, and from time to time they kind of took you out of what was actually going on in present time in the film, so didn't really like that. There are very overt swipes at the Catholic Church in this film, and Catholic, well... I was going to say and Catholic religion, not really the religion so much, but yeah, just the church. There are very overt swipes at the church. So if you're sensitive to that type of stuff, you know, you might have a bit of a problem with that. You know, that's not to say that it's too much. I didn't think it's too much. But then again, you know, I 
don't have a religion. I'm a person who was brought up with no religion. I don't subscribe to any sort of religion. So the other thing about that is that not only does this stuff not offend me, but I, I'm sure there are things in the film I am missing because I don't know a lot of things about that particular religion, Catholicism. So I'm sure people out there who are watching this who know about Catholicism and watch it, you're probably going to catch some extra stuff in it that I did not catch. So just letting you know. And it might mean more to you, to you that way too. There's a choice a character has to make in this one that actually seems that they don't really need to make a choice in the situation, that they could do both things. So it doesn't work. I know what they were going for in that moment, but it doesn't work really because you clearly are like, I don't understand how this is like a tense, got to make a decision situation because they can do both. I don't know. Around the one hour mark, it actually starts to stall a little bit and actually feels like they're starting to kind of stretch it for runtime. And I hate that, especially when they start it, you know, getting into the action, they keep it moving with those comedic aspects and there's a lot of stuff that goes on. It just sucks that it's moving, 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 looking good, looking good, looking good. And then it hits that hour mark and then it feels like it steps way back and it slows way down. And I understand it's because they need to flesh out some more of the story, but I think they needed to kind of pepper it throughout the film a little bit better instead of trying to jam it all in that one portion that really slows it down before the finale. Now, that said, they do pick it back up in the finale, which is great. They do rebound a decent amount, but that slowing down feels like, oh no, where are we headed? Are we gonna are we gonna have a bad ending here? Is it just gonna peter out and fizzle out? What's gonna happen? But it does rebound, thankfully. Like I said before, really awesome practical effects at the end of this film. I am huge in appreciating the practical effects, so they did a really good job on that. The design was nice. The execution was quite nice, so awesome. And uh, my final thought on it. Uh, there are equal parts themes of not messing with things you don't understand and misre misrepresenting yourself unethically for fame and money. So know all this going into the film. Like I said before, you know, I'm not big in possession films, so I actually was kind of entertained by it, and I think that people who are actually into possession films may find it quite quite a solid film. So, when I think about those things, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a solid three star rating. I think it's worth watching for people under in people who are into possession films, and even some people who aren't into possession films who just kind of want to take a shot at it. And like I always say, you know, every film is worth watching at least once just so you can experience it and you can make your own mind up on if you like it or not. Cause you know, it may be that film that other people are like, eh, hey, it's okay. Or I don't really like it, but you're like, wow, I thought that was outstanding. So, you know, give these things a shot. But anyway, thank you for checking this out. Please do me a quick favor. In addition to making comments down here, if you want to talk about the film and you can put spoilers down there, no problem. Uh, do me that favor and hit the subscribe button because it means a lot to me and it means a lot to my channel growth. Uh, I don't, I'm not making money doing this or anything. I'm just spending time watching the movies, taking notes, and putting the information out there, my reviews. So I do appreciate people watching it, but if you want to take that extra step and actually subscribe, it would really help me out. I mean like 70% of the views I get on my videos are from people who haven't subscribed. And if we could really change that, you know, that would be very nice for my channel and give me more visibility and, you know, get me even more motivated. So I would appreciate that. And if you are going to do that, hit the notification bell so you know anytime I'm putting up new videos or doing live streams or any of that jazz. So thank you regardless for watching this. And until next time, keep it brutal.